firstly, what do we do in S1 and 2? What is our curriculum like in S1 and 2? It's very, very straightforward. It's very, uh, very easy to understand. In S1, pupils come in uh, from primary school and we offer them everything. We offer them absolutely every subject that we have to offer. Three sciences, three socials, uh, three languages, three expressive arts, seven technologies, a whole host of things. And we'd also do the same thing in S2. And the reason why we do that in S1 and S2 is to make sure everybody has an experience. Everybody gets an opportunity to visit all the different departments, to get that specialist teaching from our specialist staff in those departments, and to make those experiences, to get the depth of those experiences to the S1 and S2. So when they get to the later end of the school, they've had a wee bit of experience and everything, and they can start making good choices. But S1 and 2 is all about experience. Get in the middle of the departments, try everything that we have to offer, and start basing your judgments about the things that you like, about the things you've got strengths in, and about the things that you're really passionate about. So S1 and 2, very, very straightforward, and as it says, there are 21 subjects on offer. It's very, very broad. And then S3, very, very wordy for point, but I'll run you through it quickly. Uh, S3 <coughs> is the sort of turning point for, uh, for our curriculum. So S1 and 2, we do 21 subjects. And then in S3, what we're saying is English and Math, compulsory uh, fundamental subjects. PE, RME, and PSED are compulsory as well. There's no opting in or opting out. So those are things that, that have to stay. And then from there, we're saying to people, you can start making some uh, elective preferences for the rest, of your, uh, the rest of your timetable. So we're giving them that opportunity to personalise their timetable, to keep everyone interested, uh, to give them a wee bit more time in the subjects that they really want to do, and uh, to keep them focused on their learning. So what we're saying is, people speak <coughs> one language, one social subject, one science, one expressive art, and two technologies. And some folk keep saying, it's why are we doing two technologies? when everything else is just one. Well, if you see that in the, in, the, in the brackets, every other uh, subject that we've mentioned already has a choice of three. So for languages, you've got Gaelic, Spanish, or French. For socials, you've got history, modern studies, or geography. The technology part of the curriculum in the secondary school is so broad that we don't want to say to pupils, you can only, you're only picking one of them, and there's seven subjects there that they're going to then say, I really like this one, but I also really like this one. What, why can't I do a wee bit more? So, we're saying to them, you have to pick two because of the sheer number of technology subject, technological subjects that there are. The last part there is the key to our S3 uh, curriculum, is those three, those three free choices, easy for me to say. Uh, we're, we're saying to pupils, you can pick from any of the subjects we've just listed there, across any of the curricular areas, pick another three of them. Pick whichever three that you really, really like, that you've not picked already. That's the other question we get as well. Can we pick something twice? Can I do French? Once, can I do it again, and then can I pick it again? No, you can only pick it up once. But you do get those three free choices. So that totals 11 subjects. So notice in S1 and 2, we do 21. And in S3, we do 11. So we're starting to narrow our curriculum a wee bit, but not too much. There's a big emphasis on not narrowing too much. We're not asking people to make big career choices. We're not asking them to say, when I leave school, I want to be a vet or a hairdresser or a joiner or uh, a lawyer, we're not saying make those choices. We're saying start picking the things that you like, that you enjoy, and those are the subjects that you're going to do. Here's the option form, I know you can read it, but I'm not expecting anybody to read it. I'm hoping that you've seen this option form before is why I'm putting it up. It has been out for the last two weeks, and it was just, a, just to show you that's hopefully what you've seen. If you haven't, there's a wee pile here that you can take one at the end, and there's also a pile at the sign-in sheets in the front door. This is also on our website as well, but hopefully uh, those these sheets will have gone home <coughs> in the last two weeks and you'll start having those conversations about I like the subject, I'm not so keen on this one, I'm really good at this one, I'm not so good at this one, I'm going to take this, I'm not going to take that. Hopefully those conversations have started already. Uh, a couple of points to note there in the sheet, uh, the, the bottom orange bit, that's our free choice, that's the one that offers all of those subjects again and that's what we call the free choice. There's three, uh, there's three subjects in there that are uh, quite new that we've put in the last couple of years. Uh, one being the School of uh, Dance, the other one being the School of Rugby. <coughs> These are on offer in S1 and S2, but they're deliberately timetabled in this form in S3 because we get away from what we call extraction. In S1 and S2, if you do the School of Rugby, uh, one week you maybe come out of uh, French and Geography and you go and do School of Rugby. And then the week after you maybe come out of uh, Physics and History and you go and do the School of Rugby. In third year, if you're picking the school of rugby or school of dance, you don't miss any subjects. We timetable it so that is your time in school of rugby, and you don't lose out on any of the other curricular areas. It's built into the timetable. 
So it's a school of dance. The school of rugby. And the third one is new this year is the Duke of Edinburgh. And we've tried, we've piloted it this year uh, with very, very uh, big success. Lots of numbers, lots of people really interested in it. But again, we've timetabled the Duke of Edinburgh uh, into the timetable to say for these two periods per week, you can go uh, and work with our specialist teachers who are uh, trained in work delivering Duke of Edinburgh and lots of outdoor uh, education visits and go and get that starting off at bronze uh, and then work your way through uh, silver and gold throughout the latter years, latter years in the school. So that's just a wee point to know. What are we trying to achieve in SDY? Why is the curriculum <coughs> based the way it is? Well, that's something we've already. Uh, we're saying to you, you have to pick one of the languages and socials and sciences. You have to pick one of these because uh, we're, we have to maintain what we call the breadth of the curriculum and essentially the broad general education. It's called the broad general education S123 because we have to provide that breadth so everybody has to keep going with a language, a social, a science, a technology. And we don't want pupils to get, uh, to get to the start of S3 and be able to drop any of those subjects because we, we see the value in continuing with them uh, through S3. Whilst keeping that breadth on, what we're also trying to do is give some personalisation <coughs> and choice. We don't want to repeat S1 and 2 and just say go and study those 21 subjects again because we know by the time pupils get to the end of S2, they're starting to make some choices. They're starting to say, I like this, I don't like this. I think I want to be this when I'm older. I think this is what I want to do. So I'm going to start saying that this, these are the subjects that I want to do. But we know that quite often these change and we get a week later and they want to do something else or we get a couple of weeks later and they love this subject because they've covered a different topic. So we're not cutting these, uh, <coughs> cutting off any curricular area. Uh, we're not asking them to make choices too early. We're not narrowing the curriculum too early. We're just starting to narrow it. And the other big point about SD is it gives the foundations for S4. Uh, SD, as I mentioned earlier on, is our turning point in the school. S1 and 2 is all about experiences. S3 is now about uh, working a wee bit harder. Our teachers turn the screw a wee bit. The case the work is a wee bit faster because the subjects that we do in S3, from those subjects are the ones that pupils are only choosing S4 to do their exams. So they're starting to get that harder level work. They're starting to get the foundations that they're going to build on into S4. I just want to touch on very, very briefly, because I've only got about five minutes left. Uh, I want to touch on briefly, how does S3 then fit into the rest of the school? What does the rest of the school look like? Well, in S4, pupils will go on and study six subjects. So again, we're, we're narrowing again. We've gone from 21 uh, to 11. We're then going to six. So we're narrowing, we're narrowing very much. We're doing English and Maths, <coughs> again, compulsory subjects in S4. But we're then saying, pick another four. Pick the four that, yes, you're really good at, the ones that you're really interested in. And at that st this stage, <coughs> start thinking about your career. What do you want to be when you're older? What do you want to do? Uh, and therefore, what subjects do you need to link in at this stage? Not just now, but this is in a year's time. Okay, so that's, that's where we are in S4 when we get there. But the only thing to bear in mind, the four subjects that we've chosen in S4, we have to have studied them in S3, unless there's an, an exception. Because remember, I'm going back to S3 being a foundation. If we are changing all our subjects that we, and we haven't done them in S3, we're completely losing that foundation. So it's strongly, strongly advised that the subjects people do in S4, they've had that grounding of them in S3. <coughs> and then in S5 and 6, we go from 6, we go to 5, we take it to an, and the next level. Uh, and then in S6, again, we do another 5 subjects. So that's how it now is. And I've talked a lot about the, the number of subjects and the breadth and the depth. This is just a wee visualisation. If you only take one thing away, hopefully you'll take away this slide here. So we'll start at the bottom. S1 and 2, it's very broad. Okay, so it covers the whole, goes across the whole width of that uh, PowerPoint. But it only goes this high. So we're getting lots of breadth and a wee bit of depth. In S3, we're then going to 11. We're building foundations. We're getting that wee bit thicker again. Uh, in S4, it's a wee bit narrower, but it's much thicker. We're getting much more content. We're getting much more depth. We're only covering six subjects, so we're getting right in there. And at that stage, we're sitting exams in these sub six subjects that we really, really enjoy and that we're really good at. And in S5, we're narrowing again, but we're going deeper. We're going to higher, uh, or National 5, whatever level is suitable for uh, the people. And then in S6, we might be going to advanced higher or higher at that stage. So it's progressively, get the work gets harder and harder. <coughs> the volume of subjects we do gets uh, lower and lower as we go through the school, but the depth of the learning gets much, much deeper. Coming back to where we are just now, second year moving into S3, what should I be thinking about when I, when I choose these subjects? Firstly, subjects I enjoy, because that's 
the main focus of school. Yeah, we want to get uh, good exam results at the end, we want to get good experiences, we want to get a qualification list when we leave school that says these are the things I've got, but of course we want to enjoy it as well. And that's what we try and do within open high schools, make sure pupils enjoy uh, their time here. So picking the ones that we enjoy, ones that we have strength in, because we're going on to, we're possibly going on to pick some of these in fourth year. And also subjects I have interest in. Which ones am I actually interested in? And I'm able to at this stage say, I'm not interested in this one, so I'm not going to take it anymore. Big thing we're saying to pupils uh, is what I shouldn't be thinking about. I shouldn't be thinking about what my friends are picking. And this is, a, this is a wee flaw we sometimes get, and we get a pile of sheets coming in from our class, and we see that there's three or four pupils, and they've all got the same subject. And we'll go back to them and say, is this really the combination that you want? Or do you want to be in all the, the, the same classes as your friends next year? And that's not what it's about in third year. It's about saying, what, what do I want to do? Not what are my friends picking. It's also not to say who the teacher is or who the teacher isn't. So I've had a, I've had a really good experience uh, in second year. I really want to get this teacher again next year, so I'm going to pick this subject. We say them, try not to think about the teacher that you've got or the teacher that you've had or the teacher that you might get, because there's no guarantee we've got big departments in the high school uh, with three, four, five, six, seven teachers. And there's no guarantee that you're going to get that same teacher again or that you're not going to get it. So <coughs> don't think about the teacher, think about the subject you're picking. Think about the content of that lesson. And also, a big one that we're, that we're looking at just now, don't think about it as a, a boy's subject or a girl's subject. So I really want to do home ec, but it's a girl's subject, so I'm not going to do that. Or I really want to do physics, but it's a boy's subject and I'm a girl, I'm not going to do physics because it's, a, it's typically a boy's subject. We're trying to break down these stereotypes and say, no, all subjects are open to, to everyone. Uh, so males, males and females, boys and girls can go into any subject that they have an interest in, that they have a passion in. It's not about the, the historical stereotypes we're breaking those down. Or we're trying, we're trying to, and those are the conversations that the guidance teachers are having when we're making choices. And finally, how are, how are our choices made? Some folk have made them already. Uh, I've seen there's a wee pile in the office. Uh, some of the pupils were, were getting in early, thinking it's first come, first serve. If I put my form in this week, I'm going to get all the options that are on my form. It doesn't work that way. I haven't looked at any of the forms yet, and I won't do it until the end of school. <coughs> and at that point, I'll gather them all in, and at that point, we'll start to see uh, what numbers that are picked, the number of pupils who picked each subject, uh, which ones will run, which, how many classes we've got, and then start planning the data. So nothing like that happens uh, until after the end of school on Monday. So, the, how the selection is made, our, and this started uh, the first day back after, after term. The PSA classes that morning came in and the Gaines teachers started talking to them about their elective choices for next year. We were get all given uh, in class a booklet and an option form. And the booklet didn't go home because it's about 30 pages long, loads of information, but it was put on the school website. If you haven't seen it, it's on the school website to download and access. And the Gaines teachers were talking through all the things I've talked about. Here's what you should be thinking about, here's what you shouldn't be thinking about, uh, here's the structure of the form, here's how you go about it, uh, and start to give them that individual advice as well as a group advice. So that's been happening the last couple of weeks. Hopefully, with these forms coming home, there's been conversations at home with you say, with a wee exchange saying, uh, these are the things I want to pick, I don't want to pick this, but I do want to pick this. And, uh, we've forced that conversation slightly by having a wee bit at the bottom of the form that says there's a parental a parent or guardian signature as well. So the parent, the pupil signs it, uh, somebody from home signs it, a parent or guardian, to say I've seen the form, and I'm quite happy with these choices that have been made, and then the guidance teacher will also sign it to say that the form uh, has followed all the, the sort of formula that we've given, uh, and that it's good, it's good to get processed. So hopefully those conversations have been had at home, hopefully the SD elective booklet has been read by the pupils in class, and then there's maybe access to home if they feel they still need to. Uh, asking questions tonight, either of, either of myself, either of the deputy heads who are here, or the guidance teachers who are here, or the classroom teachers who are about as well. Asking about the progress within the, science, the sciences, and which specific science, if, I was to, if my son or daughter was to pick one, which one did they have the best strength in, which one did they pick up naturally. These kind of conversations will be happening tonight. Um, and also hopefully by having this presentation, everyone's a bit better informed about exactly how the process goes and therefore the right decisions are made. And finally, uh, just to reiterate that the forms are to be completed, signed and returned uh, into school on Monday where they'll all be collected. It's really important that they are, they are collected and they are brought in for Monday so the, 
sort of class assignment can start getting done very, very quickly.